Ian, this morning the joint UK and Ireland bid to host Euro 2028 was formally submitted. It's obviously taken a lot of work to get to this point. It must be exciting to get it over the line. Absolutely. We're, we're delighted to get to this point. There's been a huge amount of hard work over a, a long period of time when you consider there's five host associations and five different governments, stadium owners, host cities. There's a huge amount of involvement to produce such a compelling bid document and the central bid team deserve a huge amount of credit for, for getting us to this point and we're, we're looking forward to what happens next. We'll talk about Hamden Park and the wider benefits of a successful bid for Scotland but first and foremost what do UEFA look for from a, a modern host and what do we bring to the table? We bring certainty, we bring a track record, the, the stadiums that are included in the bid, the countries that are included in the bid have got a track record of hosting world class sporting events, a number of them have been football, we have easy transport links, whilst it's five nations we are close geographically and, and it means it's accessible for supporters and, and that track record will be important when UEFA are assessing the bids. One of the things that jumps out from the proposal is that this would be a record-breaking tournament in terms of more tickets being available to supporters than ever before, given the average capacity of the, the stadiums involved. That was obviously important to the, to the organising committee. Very much so. We want to make the, the games as accessible as we can and we want to be able to allow as many supporters that, that want to come and watch the matches to go and do so, whether they are UK-based or whether they are from the influx of, of individuals that we'll see from across Europe that are, that are following their teams. So, it's important when you're putting on such an event like this that you have as much accessibility as you can and, and the stadium capacities and the numbers that we're looking at, you know, over three million people um, coming to watch the games is hugely exciting. We touch on accessibility there, more than 80% of the supporters should be able to get to the respective stadiums by, by public transport as well, so there is that obvious commitment to, to making sure this is as inclusive as possible for as many supporters as possible. Absolutely, it's about that accessibility piece that was prevalent in Qatar for the FIFA World Cup, the close proximity of all the stadiums made it um, easy and, and affordable for spectators to get to as many games as they wanted to. And, because of the geographical, close geographical links that we've got across the UK and the Republic of Ireland, it means that we're in a, a similar position for the Euro. We talk a lot here about the, the power of football and the impact that football can have on, on Scottish society. What would bringing Euro 2028 here mean, maybe economically, but also in a football sense? Economically, it's been documented, there's over £2.6 million pounds of socio-economic benefit would come to the UK and the Republic of Ireland, which would be fantastic. We missed out on that to an extent during Euro 2020 because of the Covid restrictions. We didn't see the full benefit of, of hosting full stadiums at Hamden as much as we would have liked and it's important to, to put that right and we can't underestimate the impact that that would have on Glasgow as a city and, and Scotland as a country. In terms of growing and developing the game, which is our primary objective, there is no better way to engage an audience, engage a younger audience in particular than seeing Europe's best male players come to Hamden and, and participate in such an iconic tournament and, and I'm sure that would, ha that would have the impact that we want it to. Specifically in terms of Hamden Park, Euro 2020 allowed for some improvements to be made to the stadium. Do you anticipate further redevelopment if we're successful with this bid for 2028? We're always looking to improve the stadium and, and that, that happens alongside Euro 20, obviously as a stadium owner now, we want to make sure that the, the state supporter experience is as good as it can be. There will be some um, additions and some improvements that are made as part of the Euro 28 bid and, and hopefully when we're successful we'll work out exactly what those look like. Ian, that pitch behind you has seen some iconic moments over the years, you're obviously looking to, to add to it if this bid's successful. Absolutely. When people think about iconic football events at Hamden, they think about Eintracht Frankfurt and Zinedine Zidane's fantastic volley and I'm sure there'll be some Scottish players that are looking to add their name to that folklore in Euro 28.